Hello, we are going to see today uh, brand equity. We would see brand today and brand equity, brand promise and few models on brand. Now, brand is something we always talk about. Uh, you have this brand and that brand. Now, what do you mean by brand? And how does it matter to a consumer? And how does it matter to a marketer? Let's see from the marketer's point of view as well as from the consumer point of view. Well, what is brand? You know, we buy n number of products in our life, uh, be it a luxurious product, luxury product, or some basic product. Uh, at times, we seek for a particular brand, and then we go and buy that particular brand. Now, why? Uh, this question uh, begs an answer from the marketer's point of view. If you, as a consumer, seek a product, a brand, a specific brand, and you buy that brand, I must say the marketer of that particular brand would be very happy because he has created brand loyalty from, as a consumer, you are a loyal consumer for his brand. Now, let's look at what is brand. Now, see here, what is written? Brand is a name, term, sign, symbol, or design, or combination of them intended to identify goods or services of one seller or group of sellers to differentiate them from those of competitors. Now, you, uh, you are in need of a bulb. You have plenty of options in front of you. But if you buy Philips, then that Philips brand is successfully embedded in your mind. And this is something good for the manufacturer and the promoter of Philip brand product. Now see what is written here. A name, a term, a sign, or a symbol, or a design, or a combination of them intended to identify the goods and services of one seller. In this example, we have a bulb manufacturer. He has given a brand, and you as a consumer, you sought that particular brand. Now, how does it matter to a marketer? Well, that's a good question. Now, a marketer can command premium for a brand if consumer is seeking that particular brand. I'm giving you one more example. So you want to fly from one place to the other place. Let's say you want to fly from Mumbai to Singapore. Now, when you're flying to Mumbai to Singapore, you've got different options. Now, you can fly in an ordinary airline let's say X airline, you would pay a certain amount. For example, let's say you pay 20,000 rupees. Now, if you want to fly in Singapore airline, for example, Singapore airline is a brand name and it has some amount of, some amount of luxury attached to this, some amount of image attached to this, and some amount of differential services attached to it. Therefore, you are willing to pay extra premium. Now, as a marketer, if I can command a premium from my brand, then I am successful. So, it's very important to create a brand that commands premium. Now, to ask for a premium, it's very import important from the marketer point of view to ensure 
my brand reminds in the mind of consumers. Now come back to this particular example that I illustrated. You want to fly from Mumbai to Singapore. You have X brand which is, which is unknown and that is commanding 20,000 rupees. At the same time, Singapore Airlines, much higher priced, but still, nevertheless, you are paying that extra premium because of that particular brand. So if you see here, brand is a name, term, sign, or symbol, or even design, or combination of this. Now I have given this beautiful picture here. This is drawn by famous artist, Muhammad Uzayn. Now Uzayn himself is a brand. He is one of the world leading artists. And look at this, this wonderful painting wherein you could see his signature that signifies his brand. Now, look at the examples here. Everything has a brand. Now, Sachin Tandilkar, is he a brand? Yes, he is a brand. Now, if somebody else comes and advertises in place of Sachin Tendulkar, I'm sure the marketer is not going to pay the premium to uh, uh, some extra, I mean, some ordinary person. Now, same thing goes to Amitabh Bachchan. Amitabh Bachchan, right, he comes for a lot of brands and he promotes this brand. Why? Because he has got a lot of followers. Now, same thing goes for, you know, I mean, uh, many other uh, products, even places, for example. There are states, they, uh, they sell their uh, state as a brand. Goa is one example. <coughs> Rajasthan could be another example. Kerala could be another example. So these are all brand. Then comes to different products. You have got Tata's, Lux as a brand for a soap. And you have bank and stores, if you look at it. There are big bazaar, shopper's shop, and lifestyle. Now, if you look at equity, we, we are moving from brand to equity. Now, brand, I said it could be a term, it could be a sign, it could be a combination of many things together to distinguish from one seller to the other seller. Now, what do you mean by brand equity? See, brand equity is the added value endowed on products and services. It may be reflected in the way consumers think, feel, act with respect to the brand, as well as in the prices, market share, profitability, the brand commands. So brand equity, the moment you know you talk about brand equity, like let's say, for example, water. You have mineral water available in different brands, but you don't mind paying, let's say, a few hundred more for a bottle of one liter uh, because that particular brand commands premium. It has added some amount of value on its product. Like, for example, you have got Aquafina as a mineral water and Evian as another mineral water. And this Evian is supposed to be a, I mean, a brand to reckon with and that commands premium. Now, brand equity in this particular example, it has added value. This Evian, the name, the brand added value on its product and therefore the consumer feels and thinks that this particular product has some amount of value, I mean, added to this, and it's worth paying that extra money. Now, what do you mean by brand promise? We have seen brand, brand equity, and brand promise. See, brand promise is the marketer's vision of what the brand must be and do for the consumers. Now, this is what you know, a marketer very proudly says, this is a promise I made and I'm delivering. Now look at an international iconic brand like Harley Davidson. The Harley Davidson bike is something wherein the consumers are willing to pay several 
times than the close competitor. You have a brand which is iconic. We call it a cult brand wherein the consumers don't mind several times of the relative uh, competitor and they are very proud about it. The, 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 the pride with which they own the products and that I would say, right, the, the, the pride given to the consumer is the promise of the brand Harley Davidson. Now, when you talk about brand promise, you know, you should, you should meet that particular promise. That's very important. Now, when you expect your brand is going to deliver some amount of promise in terms of the prestige, in terms of the image, in terms of the, uh, the functionality of that particular uh, product, I think that is something very important when it comes to brand promise. Now, I'm taking you to uh, three, model, three models of brand equity. Now, let's uh, look at one particular model which has been designed by a very, a very popular ad agency uh, known as Young and Rubicon. So therefore, you could see Y and R. This, this particular model, uh, wherein the brand equity is being measured, there are four, I mean, what do, what do I say? There are four criteria. Now, let's go one by one and see brand equity of this Y and R model, what it talks about. See, look at here, you have differentiation, you have relevance, you have esteem and knowledge. Now, we'll go one by one and see what it is. Now, see, look at this, knowledge to begin with, let's talk about knowledge. Now, it, the knowledge measures how the consumer is aware and familiar with that particular brand. See, uh, we are talking about a brand. We are talking about the overall brand equity of this particular brand. And it's very important to, first of all, know the knowledge level of the brand. Uh, I, I draw an example here. In India, when Starbucks came, it took, they waited quite a long time to enter into India. Now, why? Because they thought this particular market was not matured enough to enter for quite some time. And after that, Starbucks entered an Indian coffee market. Now, if you go today and you measure the brand equity, now let's say brand equity for Starbucks. So now when we measure this, let's first identify the knowledge, how many consumers are aware of Starbucks and familiar with this particular brand. That is the first step. Now, we are moving on. When we are moving on to the next step, you see here, esteem. <clears throat> what, what, did, uh, what is mentioned here? It measures the perception of quality and loyalty or how well the brand is regarded, regarded and respected. Now, see, this is very important. Now, see, the perception of the consumers and, I mean, their loyalty towards this particular brand and how well the brand is regarded and respected. So that means the first level, yes, I know the brand, right? And what is my perception with regards to uh, Starbucks? If I say, yes, I think the Starbucks quality is very good and I think... I would, you know, I mean, continuously, I mean, patronize this particular brand. Of course, the esteem in this particular case will go up. So, we have seen two things. One is knowledge. The other one is esteem. Now, let's look at relevance. See, the relevance measures the appropriateness and breadth of brand appeal. In this particular case, am I the right consumer and does it appeal to me that's again an important thing because brand there are several brands across the globe across the market they may be 
I mean, there, spread out. But does it right, matter to me? That's very important. So here, this relevance uh, measures the appropriateness and breadth of brand appeal. Now comes to the next, the, the, the top of the pyramid, differentiation. We call it energy differentiation. It measures the degree to which a brand is seen as different from others and its perceived momentum and leadership. The same, does it have a leadership position? Now you take Starbucks, right? Do you think Starbucks is much better than Cafe Day? Now, we may not directly compare these two brands. Now, because in Indian context, if you look at it, Starbucks may not have an immediate competitor, but just for the sake of it, you know, I mean, just to compare with, you know, the next competitor. Now, I'm sure in Indian market, <clears throat> this particular brand, Starbucks, would be seen definitely different and it would be seen, it would be perceived as a leader in this particular category. Now, so this is how when you measure different brands across, you come to know where does it stand. So this is about Y and R brand equity model. Now let's move on to the next model. This is known as brands. See, I mean, what is written? The brands is the world's largest brand equity database containing data, I mean, on brands gathered from interviews of 150,000 people. Now, there is a pyramid you could see. And if you look at the pyramids, there are five levels, one, the percent, and the second one, irrelevance, performance, advantage, and bonding. You know, it is, you know, I mean, it, it makes, it's a very, very logical step from one to the other. Number one, does it present, when you do a survey of this particular, I mean, uh, brand, now, you need to measure the presence of that particular brand in the mind of the consumer. That's very important. You know, when, you, when I measure a particular brand, I need to know the presence of this particular brand in the minds of consumers. And does it, is it relevant? Does it make any sense to me as a consumer? Because if it doesn't relevant to me, that brand has no value at all. So when I say a brand does matter to me, that means there is a relevance. And then comes performance. <clears throat> well, I know the brand is available. I think that it is relevant. And of course, I know I consumed or I use this particular brand. And how is the performance? Is it good? Is it bad? It is great or it is superb. Now, the performance again, you know, when you are measuring, that gives an idea where does it stand in the minds of the consumers as compared to the competitors or certain functionality. Now, if you look at these brands, you know, level one after the other, it is present and it is relevant. The performance is good, bad, very good, and the advantage. What sort of an advantage this particular brand can have for me as I compare to the other competitors? Now, if it is advantageous, certainly the loyalty is more and we move on to the next one, there is a bonding. Now, have you not heard there are many instances where consumers will wait if their brand is not available? Have you not seen many instances where consumers say, have been using this brand for several years consistency, cons consistently because it delivers promise. This is where you remember I said brand promise. So if a person is patronizing a product or a service year after year consistently, that means that particular brand has delivered. So that brand promise and delivery brings bonding. I hope you are getting an idea now of how 
this model is building the brand equity. Now let's move on to the next item. Now this is <coughs> built by one of the uh, leading uh, brand authority known as Keller. Now this, the name of this particular model is known as Brand Resonance Model Pyramid. Now see here, you have four levels starting from salience and then moving over to performance and imagery, judgment and feeling and resonance. Now if you look at it, you know, I mean it's uh, given you know, I mean, uh, pretty uh, <clears throat> clearly here, the four steps contain six building blocks that must be in place to reach the top of the pyramid and to develop successful brand. Now, see, when you talk about a salience, that means it talks about the feature of that particular brand and then comes your performance and imagery. What do you think about performance of that particular, I mean, brand? See, I talk about uh, a two-wheeler, for example. If I talk about Honda bike, now the moment you know I talk about Honda bike, you know, I mean, I think of the functionality and the performance, how does it work? To me, I mean, as a consumer, I could imagine, okay, Honda is a bike which has all functional, one particular brand and one particular variant I am talking about. Functionally, I mean, it is good. The performance is good. The, the mileage is good. And the imagery, when I talk about imagery, you know, I mean, it gives me a sort of an imagery, a bike, which has got excellent, right, a design. And then my judgment. Is it good? How do I judge this particular brand? I mean, vis-a-vis -vis the competitor and the feeling. I feel good about it. I, I feel happy about it. Uh, that, you know, I, I invested in this particular brand and then this resonance, you know, this resonates in my mind throughout. So now, if you look at this particular uh, model, wherein the features to begin with, I look at the future, and when, if you, uh, when you survey me, I would say, look, I mean, this particular brand, if I talk about, or if you ask me, I could say these are the functionalities of this particular brand, in this particular case, Honda. And then the performance, uh, I would say that, you know, the performance, right? I mean, I feel one, on, I mean, on a uh, 10 scale, I give eight marks or nine marks. That means the performance is good. And imagery, I, I shall imagine, you know, a bike has got these, you know, I mean, this is how the bike comes to me. And judgment and feeling. The moment you, know, you go to the third, the, the <clears throat> it goes above the performance, my judgment and feeling. Now, that's very important for a consumer. Now, why I'm saying the judgment of, and feeling is important because this is where the, the brand distinguishes itself. I'm going to give you an example. The latest uh, news, uh, Etihad Airline has come out with uh, an exclusive, uh, I mean, uh, luxury, uh, uh, what do I say, uh, I mean, uh, flying, uh, I mean, space. They are introducing, uh, uh, from December onwards, uh, uh, I would say, you know, I mean, it, it is much better, much, much better than the business class. Uh, they are offering for two consumers. You can book as a package. It comes with a, a bedroom. I mean, this is going to be introduced in A380, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Boeing. Uh, it comes with a bedroom. And you, two of you, can avail from Abu Dhabi to Los Angeles. And uh, you have a valet service, a butler, butler, sorry, a butler, who is going to, who is going to be there with you from Abu Dhabi to Los Angeles. And you are expected to pay $32,000, a lot of money, and you know, there's a great demand for this particular class moving, you know, to fly from Abu Dhabi to Los Angeles, paying $32,000. Now, why? Because this particular 
airline Etihad and they you know I mean they have a brand equity where I think the, the functionality anyway I think you know some of the best aircraft best people and on time and look at the performance imagery and judgment and feeling you now if somebody can commit thirty two thousand dollars that to I mean six months hence to fly from one country to the other that speaks about the brand so this is very important you know I mean when you when you are building a brand equity that brand equity is something that gives you that extra a premium which I was talking about now there are five things quickly you know I want to run a uh, building a brand equity and measuring brand equity and managing brand equity devising a brand strategy and customer equity see I was just running through in my you know I mean in this particular session you know I mean the need of brand equity what is brand equity and then measuring brand equity some of the models which we have gone through and managing brand equity I think this is again a very essential part of a marketer if you have a brand which is already successful in the market you have to manage that particular brand equity because unless you manage consistently I mean your brand value will go down so you always suppose you have you have a leadership position in a particular brand you have to manage it successfully and then you have to come with you know I mean a lot of strategies to devise a brand strategy for example you know, you're new in the markets and you want to do I mean device you need to devise a brand strategy to build that particular brand what is customer equity see customer equity why after all why you come out of the brand why you build a brand and why you you sustain that particular brand equity because you need a bottom line see you have a brand that has been sold in the market and if you have a better brand that gives you premium now when your brand gives you premium you get revenue and your bottom line in the sense your profit is better isn't it so there is always a link between your top line bottom line and the overall performance so is it a challenge to maintain brand equity is it a challenge to I mean build brand equity it is a challenge to devise a brand strategy yes you have to ensure first you build a good brand and you have to ensure that you manage that brand equity consistently and towards the end you have to ensure you consistently maintain this brand to give you in the sense when I say to give you in the sense to a marketer a better return so so far we have seen what is brand what is brand equity what is brand promise and different brand equity model I'm sure this particular session would have given you a little idea about brand brand equity and brand promise when I come next time I'll come with a new chapter and we would see in detail till then thank you